What's up, people? Let your girl Adiola. Is anybody else tired, by the way, of how Nigerians are embarrassing us all over the world? And put up, madams, for the madam. You're welcome to this program. How are you feeling, by the way? How is a uh, cancer treatment? You should be feeling better. You're treating it in London, eh? <laughs> Unlike uh, some Nigerians, you know, millions of Nigerians, when they get sick, they can't even afford to go to India. It's very nice having you on this show. So they said that uh, you said that you are ready to go to prison. Father, for prison, father. I don't understand. And Madam Madweke, for years we've been saying you be thief. As in that you stole money is what I'm trying to say. Money meant for the betterment of the future of millions of Nigerians. But you denied every single allegation. But now that America is involved, now that America is revealing all the secrets, suddenly you are no longer denying it. Now you are saying that you are ready to go to jail. <laughs> you know that hurts. That hurts. As if we Nigerians that have been saying it, as if we are mumu, it is only when America says it that it becomes an issue. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh God, you not told us this. So he said America would know. Whether one person or a group of people steal $20 billion, America will know and say this guys. This will keep that money there. By the way, you know, this money is part of the missing $20 billion that former president, good Lord Jonathan, told us at that time was not missing because he said that if the money was missing, America would know. So now, Madame is speaking. She exposed how she allocated several oil lifting contracts to Aluko as well as Amokore despite their lack of technical expertise or capacity to operate the oil mining leases. Yes, they couldn't do it. In fact, they subcontracted it to third party and then they made tons of money by not fulfilling the obligations stated in the agreement. But she gave it to them because in return, they bought Madame several properties in different parts of the world. I mean, you guys have been saying several properties allegedly, allegedly <laughs> in the name of Alison Madwake. We've been saying so many million dollar properties in her name apparently this is how she got those uh, properties and of course they wired millions of dollars into her account by the way i thought i should mention that madame wants us to know that the furniture that they bought for her was only four million dollars so not more it's just four million this is for the enemies of progress <laughs> All of you that have been saying that she spent a lot of money on furniture she wants us to know it is not that much it is only four million dollars <laughs> You know? Anyway, so with Madweke's help, these people were able to steal 1.7 billion dollars. 1.7 billion. Don't worry, we'll come back to the money. Let's just keep going. So imagine the biggest foreclosure ever in New York City is a property owned by a Nigerian. Just imagine the embarrassment I felt when I heard that they used our money to buy 50 million dollar apartment here in New York. Please let Nigerians see what these people used our money to buy a eh? 50 million dollar apartment and then there was another 80 million dollar that was spent on a yacht i said mm, mm, you know when beyonce turned 32 and she went cruising with her husband we did not know that that was a world new york that they were cruising on our money you see nigerians of course she paid i mean beyonce paid like nine hundred thousand dollars or something so she paid but the money as in the yacht go go that was our money that was cruising for the 32nd birthday and let's not forget about the house that he bought in uh, california you know he bought that with 24 million dollars oh why not yes it is our money as a matter of fact he already sold that one and then the man had three private jets three not one not two what do you do with three private jets by the way i don't know ah it's a bit long a bit long 58 exotic cars for one person alone okay that just shows you the level of poverty mentality that these people have oh you are all you see money like this you start shaking you go and buy a big house big yacht 58 cars have that and this is just to show off and to date naomi campbell no be so does that even make sense naomi don't dump him no be so <laughs> naomi don't dump him she don't move on to somebody else you see this this is how this is how these people let models take our money but you know it pains me because I always think about what this money would have done in Nigeria. You know, you guys remember that beautiful airport in Zimbabwe that I've been showing you for some time now. Victoria Falls Airport was built with $150 million. I found that. 
150 th I mean think of how many of that we would have now in Nigeria 11 of such airports would be in different places now in Nigeria in fact forget about Zimbabwe are you guys familiar with the Enfidha International Airport in Tunisia that was built from 2007 to 2009 they spent 520 million dollars between 2007 and 2009 to build that airport 520 million dollars that means that with this money that these people stole at least we would have three of such airports in Nigeria it's a very beautiful airport very efficient I mean the Cape Town International Airport in South Africa was renovated and expanded in order to look as good as it is right now with 138 million dollars just 138 million dollars so that means if they should spend that 138 million dollars on the airport in Lagos what we would have right now would be the envy of so many countries but you know forget about airport madame is sick in London not be so you think that money would have built her a very good hospital where they will be treating her in a yes ah, of course <laughs> what am I even talking about rush hospital is tower in Chicago it was built with 654 million dollars not billion I'm talking about million dollars now and they built it in 2011 in 2011 far and do you guys know how much they make at that hospital more than three billion dollars you see how infrastructure can fill the economy they spent 654 million they are making three billion and you know I'm sure some of the people that are paying big big money at such hospitals will be big Nigerian officials don't they treat cancer at that hospital of course they treat cancer at that hospital and they only spend 54 million dollars and guess what they have 8436 employees I'm just saying that so many people would have nice jobs today in Nigeria and what about that hospital in Texas yes the Texas Children's Pavilion for women that hospital was built for 575 million dollars so 575 million dollars and this was between 2007 and 2012 only 575 million dollars was the building cost for this really nice hospital and these people stole almost two billion dollars and they spent it on yacht on cars this hospital employs 1789 doctors and 1366 nurses hopefully some of you are starting to realize the impact of what these people are doing it's not just about the fact that we could have good hospitals and less people would die but many graduates would have jobs today if only these people would just invest the money in Nigeria some people will tell me why are you telling people to invest in Nigeria when there is no power so if somebody like this should spend the money to invest on power don't you think we would have stable electricity by now I thought they privatized the electricity company if somebody like this should invest in the electricity company the electricity would be stable I can go on all this Milo Cancer Hospital in Connecticut was built with 467 million dollars that is a cancer center even if we just have one of that in Nigeria is it just me or have you all noticed that it is no longer the common people that are suffering from lack of good hospitals in Nigeria don't you guys see celebrities Nigerian celebrities on social media asking for funds for them to go to India for them to go to Dubai for treatment have you guys not been seeing it instead this is why spending this money buying houses in America now the truth is as much as we like to crucify government officials and big people for robbing the future of our children in Nigeria even the common people are corrupt as in this corruption thing is not everywhere I'm sure you guys have seen the story of the lady at shop right the one that stole 554 million naira from customers within one month i mean how how is it possible a sales girl oh, miriam mufutao ah auntie moria hey you don't have her photo auntie moria hey. within one month of getting a job as a cashier at a shop right within, within one month of resuming for her job this girl bought her own pos so she would swipe customers cards on it so instead of the money going into shop right account it was going into her account Nigerians why are we like this why you see I fear Nigerians ah, I fear Nigerians so politicians are robbing us left and right and now common people are also robbing people how about even a sales girl stole 554 million in one month in one month oh, what was successful eh you would think that she would have stopped after one or two million or ten million and not like she had to go on 554 million until she got caught of course the girl will go to prison for stealing the money although and she's stole a lot of money don't get me wrong but i know some people that have stolen billions of dollars and they are not going anywhere just think of all the hospitals the airports we would have today how advanced nigeria would have been if not for these thieves and eh? it's so clear that the government has failed us in nigeria you would think that by now some non-profit organizations will come together even if it's just to build one badass hospital just one one that the whole world will be talking about and say ah just 
just one good hospital of amazing standard, at least the one billion that we spend every year on medical tourism, at least that would now be invested back into the Nigerian economy, you know? Because once we have at least one very, very good hospital, trust me, the federal hospitals, they will feel the competition and they would improve. But another thing I found really interesting is the fact that the US did not say anything for years, all this while, when these people were buying the yacht, when they were buying the apartments in New York, when they were wiring the money into America, and they did not say anything. They've been pumping this money into the American economy. They didn't say anything. It is now that America is talking. Hey, I want to know what you guys think. So they have money in America, in UK, and Switzerland. Do you think that the US or UK or Switzerland should return the money that had been looted? And do you think they will return it? And if they should return the money to the Nigerian government, what do you think would happen? I want to know what you guys think. But again, you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Ghana, I am so excited for this Ghanaian couple that recently welcomed a baby after 38 years of marriage. I was like, what, what, what? The wife is 59 and they've been married for 38 years and they already gave up on having a child and then they came to the US for fertility treatment and then they gave birth to this bouncing seven pound four ounces boy at Bellevue Hospital near Albany here in New York. So I decided to talk about the story to congratulate them and also to tell people that it's never too late if you're trying to have a child if she's 59 and she could do it you can also do it and also just for people to be aware that there is fertility treatment it can be very expensive but there are fertility treatments and i don't even think you have to come to america to do it but if you can afford to come to america hey why not but i just wanted to say this story just to say that it's never too late if anyone out there is also trying to have a child all right you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so moving on to Togo, okay, so you just, you cannot make this up, okay? <laughs> this is like only in Africa story. I'm sorry to say that, but <laughs> it is what it is. I think the president of Togo and the government officials, they must be having sleepless nights. <laughs> the spirits of those that they killed must have been haunting. <laughs> it must have been haunting them. Because you guys do not believe what they did. They organized a national purification ceremony to appease the spirits of those that they have killed. <laughs> those that they have killed, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, stuffs are happening in Africa. So as you guys know, only one family has been in power in Togo for the last 50 years. The father was president for 38 years. 30, oh, mm, mm, mm. My Togo, these people, you have, tri you have tried. You have seen Pepe. <laughs> the man killed so many people. He tortured and detained so many political activists. Several times he would even order soldiers to open fire on protesters in broad daylight. That happened in 1991 and 1993. They killed more than 100 people at a time. Just, you know, opening fire on protesters. University students led a revolution in the early 90s and he killed so many of them. There was a day that they found 28 bodies of protesters in the lagoon until he died on the seat. The man was brutal. And of course, when the son became president, he continued in the same path as his father. Till today, no one has been prosecuted for the 2005 election violence. So, you know, that was when the son imposed himself on the people. The UN said that 500 people were killed that day. Opposition members said at least 1,000 people were killed. Anyway, the son is now serving his third term by fire by force. You see, he's already in the same step as his father. Father did 38 years. It's been 12 years now that the son is now president as well. So, instead of doing the right thing, you know, like him stepping down. Yes, instead of him to step down and do the right thing, let justice prevail, return all the money that you've stolen, you and your family. Instead of him releasing political prisoners, the president decided to go and do, <laughs> to do a spiritual cleansing of the country. I'm telling you, he had Christian priests, Muslim clerics, and a traditional priest. You know, they are, all of them, they are doing voodoo for three days, uh, black magic. They killed animals upon animals as sacrifices on national TV. They were slaughtering animals in order to appease the spirits of those that him and his father have killed. <laughs> Now, wow, they killed all kinds of animals. Only God knows how much he gave those priests. Yes, did you guys see the church services as well? Le pasteur Jacuti a centré son exhortation sur l'amour. Those who committed impunity are still not punished. They are still there terrorizing the people. These people must think that Togolese people are stupid. Taking them for a ride. Instead of prosecuting the criminals, they gave family members of those that were killed $400. 
As in, I was, I was like, like seriously, so if they killed your son in 2005, they give you $400, just imagine. Apparently they spent $3.4 million to silence people and to kill goats and chickens to appease the spirits of the dead. <laughs> Togo, why? I, this bothers me because not long ago, the president awarded a popular soldier that had killed so many people, Major Colon. He awarded him with a medal of honor and people were outraged. In fact, traditional chiefs wrote an open letter to the president that he should renounce the medal because the guy is a killer. Of course he didn't. Instead, he appeased the souls of those that have been killed and now the killer is no longer a criminal because the dead have been appeased. The most ridiculous thing is the fact that now that Togo has been purified, the dead have been appeased, no one is allowed to say any negative thing henceforth about the government. <laughs> It is now an offense to have grudges against the government. They said now the whole country is one. We are all one. So all those that are calling for justice, all the activists, they are now the enemies of progress. They are now the enemies of progress. People like me, I'm now <laughs> I'm the enemy of progress because I'm talking about the atrocities that this guy and his father have committed. So <laughs> the political prisoners are still in prison, by the way. The whole time they were, <laughs> they were doing all the ceremonies, they could have just released all the political prisoners, all the opposition members that they have arrested those ones are still in prison <laughs> let me know what you guys think about all the sacrifices that they just made in togo you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so before i sign out i just wanted to let you guys know i'll be on vacation next week so there will not be a show next week all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook twitter and instagram until next week i'm gonna see y'all later peace out growing up in kenya my sister and i were very close but like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better.